As the death toll from the California wildfires continues to grow, so many people are now left without their homes. And my next guest is one of those individuals. Jodine Cetera lost her home in Paradise last Friday, and we've reached her now where she's staying in Chico, California. Hello to you, Jodine. Hi. We appreciate you taking some time out to talk to us today. Tell us how you're doing. Um, strangely enough, I'm, I'm really hopeful. The community, uh, the, the community support has been profound. Um, people are doing remarkable things from everywhere in the country. And um, I just happen to be in a place where I get to see that effort every day. So it's, it's, it's been really awesome and really part of the healing process. And we know for so many people living in this area, it's just been an ongoing nightmare. Can you take us back to what happened last week to you? Well, I happened, I was fortunate because I came to work early that day on Thursday. Uh, I came to work at seven. So it's about a 20 minute drive to Chico. And um, I dropped my son off at childcare and I came to work. And as soon as I pulled into work, a coworker said that I needed to see this. And um, she walked me through to the back of the building, and I saw the smoke uh, plume forming right where my where the town of Paradise is. And so she said, I'm going right now. And she said, come on, let's go. And we both got in our vehicles, and she drove a ahead of me. And I made it about halfway up to the Skyway. And I looked at my tank, and I had a half a tank of gas. And I just knew. I just knew that um, it, it wasn't a responsible decision for me to go up. And... Um, I had to, I just had to make that decision right then and I'm really glad I didn't get stuck in that evacuation and I didn't interfere with the first responders and what they were doing to try and get people out of that town so um, unfortunately I sat uh, here uh, all day and then the following day until I um, got confirmation about my home on Friday Friday morning and now you did get a chance also to, to see the damage to your home and, mm -hmm. and you've shared some photographs with us. What was it like to see before and after what is now left of your home? It's pretty devastating. But um, the, the destruction is so vast that it really takes the sting out of it when I know that there's so many people suffering and so many people missing loved ones. Um, I have someone here at work that um, had confirmation that her um, grandparents uh, perished in the fire. And just the immediate needs of everyone here is um, really um, gives you a different perspective. But seeing my home um, in, in ash is um, it's something I'll never forget for sure. Now, you're saying that your colleagues, because you actually work for the Salvation Army, so not only are you dealing and coping with your own devastating situation, you're trying to help other people also deal with all sorts of different types of loss that they're faced with because of this fire. So how is that maybe cathartic for you, or, or how is it helping these other individuals? Well, um, as the as the needs arise, I mean, this is such a, a, a vast situation. The needs are arising different every day. So, as we um, as you know, we located employees. Uh, we tried to find out uh, where they were at. We uh, got confirmation that one of our locations up in Paradise had burned. So, um, just trying to figure out what the immediate resources are for those employees um, has uh, been a, a welcome distraction. I don't know how to put it any other way. Um, making sure that people get what they need, um, trying to get the most up-to-date information for them. And then we also have um, the adult rehabilitation program here. So we have 30 men and 20 women that are going through a six-month residential treatment program. So uh, reuniting them with their families, making sure that all those welfare checks went out, that they got calls to their family um, that morning, and uh, following up on all that has been, um, it's just been one thing after another just making sure that we, we get to the people that need us the most. At least you can call it, I guess, a welcome distraction, and that's a very positive way of looking at it, the fact that you're helping so many other individuals who are going through exactly the same sort of, you know, traumatic incident that you're going through yourself. And we know that you've got a three-year-old son you mentioned. How is he mm -hmm. coping with all of this? How are you able to help him deal with this loss? Well, I did some research, and I guess the uh, the advice that I got was that um, to be transparent, 
just to be honest and to make sure that um, he knows what's happening. Last night, he did tell me that, um, Mama, when, when we build a house, um, can we make sure that it, it's the kind of house that can't burn down? <laughs> and um, he wants a greenhouse. <laughs> And um, he wants he wants it just like it was. And so for him, um, you know, for for you know his from his perspective, um, that was his stability, and that's what all he's known. So as we start to work through what it means to lose everything, um, we're gonna he's gonna learn some valuable lessons. And in some ways, it's it's, it's gonna be a really positive experience, I think. And these kids are gonna be bonded in a way um, in Butte County that um, is just remarkable. And um, I, I really think that there is hope in all of this um, and, and it's, it's, come, it's come out in a really profound way. Well, your son seems to be staying positive in it all and uh, that hope for a house that can't burn down. That is nice to, have to put on the wish list. We send you strength and positive thoughts and we thank you for all you're doing out there as well and sympathies for the loss that you and your community are facing. Thank you, Jodine. Jodine Cetera in Chico, California.